Hi guys, so here's some first thoughts about the May 24 TOK essay titles. Now, these thoughts are not the defined, detailed TOK Today videos on each essay title. They're coming up soon. Now, today we are privileged and honoured to have with us Mr. Gareth Stevens. He is my talk guru. This guy taught me more about TOK than all the workshops and books and so on and so on. And he's come along to give us his thoughts on essay title number one. Welcome, Gareth, to TOK today. Gareth, Hello. <laughs> would you like to introduce yourself and tell the viewers a little bit about uh, who you are and why you're here? Why am I here? There's a good top question. Been in education for, I was totting it up the other day, I think it's over 33 years. So I started as an art teacher, went through to run a faculty, big faculty of design, technology and art in the UK. Um, did a bit of consultancy, which led to a full-time position as a consultant, mainly uh, to do with learning projects and assessment for learning. Um, and then I met this wonderful chap, Daniel, Mr. Trump in um, Hong Kong. We 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 taught alongside each other. Um, for 11 years um and and those 11 years the highlight for me was teaching tok um and i think then for most of that time you were head of tok weren't you daniel um uh, that was in a large international school and then several years ago i retired okay well thank you very much for giving up your time to come and talk to us about the may 24 talk essay type titles let's mm -hmm. jump in with the first title, is subjectivity over-celebrated in the arts but unfairly condemned in history? Discuss with reference to the arts and history. What were your first thoughts on this, Gareth? Well, I think I think like most students, when you see an essay title for the first time, you, it's it's a word level thing, isn't it? So I, I I start to think, well, what what do we actually mean by subjectivity, and how does that play out in various um, areas of knowledge? Obviously, in this case, we're we're bound to to discuss arts and history. The wording of the of the question is is kind of it's I suppose a little bit informal, but unfairly condemned in history. And so again, you know, who's doing the condemning, on what basis, and by what yardstick are they doing the condemnation? If indeed it's happening in history, so. That's my first sort of th thinking on it, really. I wonder whether IB are sort of inviting the students into a bit of a cliche, the idea that the, the arts are subjective and, and that's good and the history is meant to be objective, but it's very easy for it to be subjective. And, and you know, I read this a lot from students. So they'll just say art is subjective. And I think that they're probably, they want students to sort of put forward critical arguments that art is, is underpinned by objective or has aspects to it which are objective knowledge. The role of the arts, particularly the visual arts, I suppose, has changed in the face of technology. So I think, you know, to be a painter back in the day, especially something like a, a portrait painter or a topographical painter, a painter who paints scenes and landscapes, was to record as closely as possible what the eye saw. And then obviously with the advent of photography, and as photography became more, you know, commonly used by 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 the population, that gave rise to more subject, more of a concern or focus on subjectivity in the visual arts. Yeah, and there are, there are underpinning frameworks, aren't there? So you look at things like uh, in in visual arts, things like the uh, the rule of composition, the rules of composition mm. are sort of objective. They apply from one instance to another. You know, musical uh, notation is is a sort of objective thing. People who can read music, you can pass it from one person to the other, and it means pretty much the same thing to them. Color theory uh, is based on on chromatic science and physics uh, yeah every artist if they if they mix um uh you know blue and yellow they're going to get green but certainly <laughs> uh, there's an argument for cultural re relativist uh viewpoint here as well is that there is more objectivity or more let's say a common approach in the arts an agreed set of rules in certain archaic art forms and in existing cultures now than we have in 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 the West, and, and I think it's very much the 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 rise and the extent of individualism in the arts is very much a product of um, 
the North or the West, the developed world, um, Western notions of contemporary art, um, they're not so pronounced in other areas of the art. So, it, again, I know this crosses over with indigenous indigenous knowledge systems, but um, it's still, still worth discussing and reflecting on, I think. Oh, yeah, I think that students could write really interesting essays mm. around the role of objectivity and subjectivity of art mm. and indigenous knowledge. You sort of get into defining what is art. An argument could be made that in indigenous knowledge systems, there isn't really a separation between history and art, that the historical record is also the artistic record. You could also, and then I've had students who've done this, make the same argument in non-Indigenous knowledge systems, like in our knowledge systems. You know, what do we know about Henry V? We know what Shakespeare wrote about him. What do we know about Julius Caesar? You know, what do we know about the Victorian times? We know what Dickens wrote about. <laughs> It, it, it's uh, very interesting, the notion of subjectivity in history as well. When I was a boy, my grandfather gave me a book about called The Memorable Battle of Waterloo, and it was published seven years after the battle. It's a beautiful book, full of engravings, and the first half or so is is an account of the, bat of the battle. One can only suppose that it's supposed to be objective. But then the second, well, maybe this, the last third of it, is the most interesting, and it's called Interesting Anecdotes. And it's people that were at the battle telling what happened to them. It's always interested me the idea of what kind of knowledge you get from reading the historical account, and then what kind of knowledge or, or indeed experience you have of, of, of reading first-hand accounts. And, and one could argue, I suppose, that, you, that, that they complement each other. Really interesting adjective in there from the IB that is unfairly, unfairly condemned. It's very strong in history. I can immediately see there being quite accessible discussions about the sort of politicization of historical knowledge that's happening certainly in, 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 in the Western world, um, and, and I venture to say everywhere else as well, and, and of course, that politicization you could argue that's a form of subjectivity. That's an increase in subjectivity. And whether that's unfair depends upon what you think the point of history is. Well, we all know, I think, that a large amount of historical knowledge is, is can be reduced down to propaganda. You know, um, you only need to reflect about what's going on in Ukraine or what has gone on in Ukraine in the last year or two. The Russian side of the story, if you like, and then our side of the story, if you like, you know. And um, I think you're right. I think there is a there is a, a valid application to be made here of the word subjective in that context. Um, I think I think another. I think I think you've hit on something here. I think this 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 essay is about challenging preconceptions about arts and history, and it's inviting students to topple those preconceptions if you like um not not necessarily like like i think we've always said it depends on what direction the student sets out to take their essay and they need to feel confident to take control of that direction uh as long as it's set out signposted very clearly in in, in introductions but um yeah i think we've i think we've indicated already that the subjectivity it, it's overly simplistic to say that all the arts are subjective mm -hmm. and it's over simplistic to say that, um, or to imply that history is objective. Yeah, or shouldn't be subjective. Yeah, the phrase unfairly condemned in history, it's a little bit disingenuous, really, because it kind of, um, it's clearly kind of not the case, I would argue, although that's a hard and fast statement for this early stage in the process. But it, it doesn't kind of chime with me, you know, I don't, I, I don't really. I'm not aware of that of this unfair condemnation going on that often. But perhaps, it, perhaps it is within history, historical institutions, or departments, or what have you. I wonder if it's a um, a tilt towards the more aware movements at the times and things like decolonization of the curriculum um, and and that sort of more. Um, things like critical race theory and, and so on, and trying to get to grips with alternative knowledge narratives, to use that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a really, really good point. What will humans look back on 
in, that was happening in 2023 uh, with with absolute horror. That 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 level of discussing subjectivity to do with well, what does it mean to be alive and thinking in the, in 2023, and how would I have thought had I been born a century earlier? I mean that that yeah, that is pertinent to the to the issue of subjectivity, definitely. And I think um, I think you've hit on something there with that that idea, particularly to do with you know critical race theory, as you say, uh, and, and other historical things like uh, racism, enslavement, all those sort of things. Yeah, there's there's a lot for students to get into in this essay. So focusing on that is going to be really important. So there we have it. Gareth's views on essay number one. I found that really useful. He gave me a lot of ideas that I hadn't already had myself. I hope that helped you. If it did, then I would love a like. And I'd be so pleased if you would give me a subscribe. Hit subscribe if you're doing the May 24 essays, because I've got a lot more content coming up on these essay titles, particularly the TOK Today detailed essay breakdown video, which will be coming up in a couple of weeks. If you want more details about this essay or you want the essay notes, then go over to tokatoday.com. Stay toptastic, my friends.